Good morning, Howdy Man the Box. Uh, we are live. This is Ice Cream Uploads, Wednesday, the 16th of October 2019. My name is Graham Day, and this man, if you are watching on our video services here in the box, is the Bibberino. How you doing, Bib? I am doing not so good today, mate. I feel like absolute shite. Uh, I think but that... for the purpose of the podcast, I feel fantastic. You absolutely As long as the voice is fine, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we need to uh, kind of cast uh, aspersions, point fingers, and you know, basically place blame on the feet of Mr. Craig James Pitt, who is the snottiest, lurgiest man in the world, uh, or at least he was yesterday. Uh, and I am I'm kind of similar. I'm feeling. It. I'm just going to try and move around so I can make. So I'm not hiding behind you. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Craig had the lurgy. I had like kind of naffness yesterday uh, and baby has it today although one thing before we get into the show before we go into the details of who we are what we do where you can see it and all the rest i want to mention one thing in the chat number one pirate says no bibby and graham shoulder hashtag disappointed well bibby doesn't oh, know about this uh let me see uh, this is i mean i've done it in in about six Six minutes with no design help, and I didn't have any assets, so let me just see how this works. It's not going to be on my shoulder, but it can be on my hand. I'll put my hand there, and then... Boop. See, I'm watching this through the screen. Yay! So it's there like... we go! <laughs> That's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God. there we go. <laughs> you ask for Bibi, sat on me, there you go. Not quite on the shoulder, without me going down there. Uh, but there you go. We deliver on Ice Cream Awards. If you listen to this on the podcast, then I'm afraid. Do you know what? I can, I'm not even going to explain it. Just go check it out. We'll probably clip it, post it on social media, and you can see it there. <laughs> but now, back oh, to the show. Like well done. Well done. <laughs> so the, the channel is Ice Cream Uploads. The show is The Scoop. This is the coolest channel, the coolest show on Twitch. We are Ice Cream. I've said myself, I am Graham. This man is the bib. And he's no longer sat on my shoulder. But today we are going to bring you all the biggest and best gaming news uh, from the whole of the games industry and beyond. And give you our insightful ice cream input. Today we have, I believe, six news articles for you and your viewing pleasure. And we kind of have to be off the air pretty quickly today. So we're just going to jump straight into things, which obviously, if you listen to the podcast, uh, podcast services, I mean, that's kind of what you want. Uh, I'll give oh, you right. a bit of information before we do that. We are on podcast services, as you've just heard. We are live right now on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause. This video will be posted for on-demand users on YouTube about an hour or so after we finish the show. And then a little bit later in the day, we'll be live on SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, Spotify, and potentially even... Google Play, which which we've oh. been saying we haven't, but I said potentially. Maybe did something yesterday, but I'm not sure. The, the wheels are in motion. <laughs> However, I haven't checked it this morning, so we could we could be live on uh, Google Play right now. In fact, I can do this right now. I can check. Okay. But uh, yeah, Graham, if you want to go ahead and read the first article, and I'll see what I can do for my. So own. I will jump in, uh, and this one we've started with because. Uh, Full disclosure, we have done a lot of work with Volition, uh, Koch Media and Co. in the past. And that kind of probably gives you a little bit of heads up to a, a cool little article, which is there on your screen now. So Volition uh, finds long-lost Saints Row 2 source code ple uh, pledges to fix notoriously wonky PC port. Uh, <laughs> and this is uh, an article by Matt Wales from Eurogamer and 10 out of 10 points for using wonky in the... Uh, uh, title of an official uh, news article over a decade after its original release is the uh, tagline so developer volition has pledged to fix the notoriously broken pc version of saints row 2 over a decade after its original release having found the game's long lost uh, long thought lost source code speaking during a special announcement live stream which also marked saints row 2's 11th birthday in the u.s volition's general manager mike klaus explained that the studio when faced with having to create their version uh, three versions of its game for its original 2008 release opted to outsource the PC port, and as both Volition and countless users on the game's Steam page will attest, the results were less than stellar. For a long time, the only way to enjoy Saints Row 2 on PC in anything like a satisfactory manner has been to rely on community-created mods. Uh, Volition's Mike Watson himself, a modder and now a senior community manager at the company, has led the charge to improve the game internally for years, but plans were scuppered when the studio was unable to find the original PC source code. Now, however, after much searching, that code has been found. Uh, so yeah, we, I think that's that's enough of a, uh, of an overview for us to jump into that. So basically, uh, Volition made Saints Row 2 uh, over a decade ago, and now um, 
over a decade later, they have the ability to go back into that code. Obviously, they created the game originally, and it was a bit pants for PC users. I mean, it was pretty decent for console users, um, yep. which I think that was uh, a part of the issue at the time. I remember... Um, uh, I mean, I wasn't a PC player back then, and I remember quite a lot of hatred for, for Saints Row 2. I mean, it, I didn't know any of this. I mean, like I said, we, we have done work with um, uh, Koch Media uh, and before that, THQ working on Saints Row titles, but I was only involved with three, uh, four uh, Agents of Mayhem um, and a, a number of other Deep Silver titles, uh, but didn't know any of this, so that's interesting. I just thought there was a lot of hatred for it, and I thought, well, I quite enjoyed it. It was just basically the second version of Centro, which was essentially yeah. a, uh, their their spin on the GTA open world kind of uh, thing. So uh, yeah, I didn't understand. But anyway, they've outsourced it. It was done badly. And now they have the ability to bring it back. So interesting. What, what do you reckon your thoughts are on the reason for that, Bib? Uh, I, I, first of all, how do you lose code for a game? It happens all like, the time, though. Uh, I know. The, 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 didn't there was a Final Fantasy game? I'm sure there was that the code got um, got lost. But do these people not have backups? Or <laughs> do they not? Do they not? Do they not, they not file everything? Maybe Jess needs to go over there and work there for a bit <laughs> and sort out all uh, all of their stuff. But I, do, I don't understand it. I don't know how you can lose code, especially for a game that you've just worked on. Yeah. And you want to put it to other things? I mean, it couldn't have been the the the, diff, the the time frame between completing the game on 360 and then putting it to other things. It's not as if it was like what they've done with was it Saints Row Four that they've just brought out on the Switch. Yeah. It's not as if there's like a ten year gap and you're trying to find the code. It would have literally gone gold, and then they were like, oh, "Okay, let's put it on the PC." Uh, can you pass me that source code, Dave? <laughs> Problem. Uh, Crap! I think I, see, I, think I put it, it in the bin with my, uh, my my sandwich wrapper. Oh no! I mean, I mean, it does happen all the time. Uh, well, not all the time, but fairly often. But it is bizarre because you can understand. Okay, you've got. Uh, I mean, I'm probably oversimplifying game development. There's probably multiple different branches that kind of work together. Hey guys, don't panic! I've woken up now. Brain is finally working. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the stream, big zombie monkey. Yeah. Good um, morning. Yeah, I think I mean, game development often does work in different branches that are then kind of like sewn together, but. Yeah. I can understand a branch going missing, or uh, you saw all your branches together. Oh, crap! Um, I've still got a a, a a replace me surface texture in there, so let's let's do a different version, and they kind of uh, overwrite the previous one, and then someone's gone. You do realise that we didn't have all that other stuff. That was the backup, and you've just overwrote it and only replaced yeah. it. I can understand that you're losing bits of working progress, like if you're working through a document and you over save over version two point one point three point one or something like that, and you wanted to save over two point one point three point two, are you like, oh my god? <laughs> uh, but not like, yes, we finished. This is the finished product, and now it's out. Get out of there! See that that was a, that was a visual metaphor. I had a ball in my hand, and now I don't. For those of you listening, on podcast <laughs> services. Um, yeah, it's a, it's it's an interesting one for me. Uh, uh, the, what what this means, I mean, at the towards the bottom of the bottom of the article, uh, I've seen oh. to have got rid of it now anyway. Bring but I think screen. they say something like, "Don't expect it anytime soon. Um, we'll be doing it'll be ready when it's ready," kind of thing. But that makes me think that it may be worth picking this up now if it's cheap as chips. Pick it up, two or three quid, and then while they're updating the code, they may actually give you better graphics. They may actually uh, go back and change some of the resolutions on the stuff because obviously. When did this come out? 2008, maybe? Around that sort of time, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, obviously it's changed a lot since then. We've now got 1080p, we've now got 4K, blah, blah, blah. If they can go back and just give us some new stuff um, while they're doing it, that's probably, that may be what they're alluding to as well. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, <clears> I mean, <throat> Saints Row 2 was a decent game. I, I really, really enjoyed the first one. Uh, yeah, I've, I played Get Out of Hell. I haven't played Saints Row 4. I can't remember the last one. I think I played the. Th it was Saints Row the third that they brought out on Switch. Sorry, um, but yeah, I think we're all right. Uh, the interesting thing is obviously the fact that they are spending a little bit of time um, developing it, making sure it's right. So they said they're not going to rush it out and just kind of like go. There you go. We think we've done a good job. <laughs> They've kind of gone. Okay, it's ten years later. We feel like we owe a little bit back to the community. Um, let's put it out. But also, I mean, you mentioned the Saints Row Four port. Have, have they gone, okay, well, Saints Row 4, uh, 4 has done quite well on Switch, um, so we've got a little bit of a gap now. Do we 
kind of capitalize on that and there's a lot of people that probably didn't get Saints Row uh, 2 on PC because a lot of people didn't even touch PC gaming I, I certainly didn't 10 years ago yeah um, so maybe it's an opportunity to kind of get a little bit of cash flow keep uh, Saints Row um, I'm just going to kill my slack because it's shi pa pa in my ears I don't know if you guys can hear that through the screen um, so yeah I don't know if it's a case of they just want to keep the cash flow keep it relevant because I, I believe they've previously said that a, that a new Saints Row game is coming anyway um so is this a case of okay well this is something that allows us to keep i mean it's, it's a very good community sentiment move people love mm-hmm. this game a lot of people didn't get a chance to fully enjoy this game uh now we have an opportunity to give you a chance to go back to fully enjoy the game um and then yeah you know maybe there's something else coming too maybe maybe but- well, if they found the code, maybe they want to put put it to Switch as well because I, I would enjoy playing it. I would en- definitely enjoy playing the first one again. And I echo Spike's thoughts in the chat uh, where he says Saints Row One was incredible. I understand why they went in the direction that they did. They was never going to compete with GTA, but boy did it come closer. Uh, but boy did that first one offer something close. Oh, I hundred percent agree with that. It right. was incredible. It was so good. Things like I mean, that's when you. I mean, we're talking about PS Five and. Uh, uh, is it Scarlet? Is that what the next Xbox project Scarlet is called? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, Scarlet, yeah. So yeah. we're talking about that and, and the ray tracing and the lightning effects and stuff uh, so that those consoles will bring us SSD ultra fast loading. I mean, the equivalent of that, going back to the start of the Xbox 360 and the PS3 uh, era, was how cool is that water effect? It can ripple. Because <laughs> it's like you, you play GTA San Andreas and the things like that on PS2 sort of gen, and then you jump in the water and you're in in a blue thing and there was kind of like just a bit of ripple but then i remember seeing fire and water on saints row thinking i know this is for all intents and purposes for me as a i don't know 15 16 year old whatever i was at the time uh this is just a gta ripoff so why yeah. is it so good why does it look so good why does it play so well i mean my dude looked like some big buff bloke running around with his big fat head and and purple tracksuit on che- tearing up still water like a badass but but I thought, you know, I'm just buying it because GTA is not out yet. There is no GTA yet. But then fully, fully uh, invested into Saints Row after that. So, yeah, uh, exactly. Saints Row was incredible. Uh, uh, Spike's comment, Saints Row was incredible. Understand the direction they did in the series. I mean, uh, uh, they were never co- going to compete with GTA. But did uh, boy, did that first one offer something close? Absolutely. It was, it was definitely on a par. I mean, they did the right thing probably by differentiating themselves after that. There was no GTA, so they, they had a good free hit but then after that yeah gta was going to come back with a force so yeah but yeah it's it it's, it's, the other ones where you started like running up hills uh, running up the side of buildings and stuff like that that kind of was like eh, i'm kind of over this now but the first one as a gta clone was just immense i would definitely play that one again if i ported it to the switch i would quite happily part about 20 pounds to play that because i don't want to play full price for it when i can pick it up for the 360 for like four pound <laughs> yeah absolutely. i think i've still actually got it for the 360 <laughs> um, but Just, yeah my, my opinion play. is if they do use this as a stepping stone for a uh a Sensor of five they they keep the mental over the top stuff that Sensor kind of became famous for but mm-hmm. still <clears throat> Using the word over the top is probably a bit of a, an oxymoron because to what I'm going to say now in terms of, but then strip it back, keep some of that flair and that creativity, that craziness, um, but just make it a bit more manageable. Because someone going into play Saints Row 4, where you're the president of the United States, who's also yeah. some superhero dude, and uh, you're just kind of like, hey. Okay, you've got a lot of baggage. You have to go up through the levels. People that played Saints Row well, One, Two, Three, and Four, you went up with it. But then when you run around with the wub bug gun going, wub, 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 yeah. you just kind of like, I, I don't know. Or what as Spice said, smacking someone in the face with a dildo. I mean, that was on. I believe that was on like Central One, uh, or was that on GTA? San no, I think that, that was. I'm fairly certain that was the second one that you first got the the dildo oh, um, bat on. Pretty... It was just like a, it was like a giant stick with a big floppy one at the end, wasn't it? There was there was one like it might be GTA. You go into one of the police stations and there's a dildo in the shower. It might have been GTA at the point in time. That's, I think that is GTA. Yeah. So it's yeah. Either way, I mean, see, so <clears throat> it's going to be quite hard, probably, what I'm saying to add some of that craziness without overdoing it because GTA also does have some of that craziness. So if you can pick up a, d- a, a dildo in a police station shower, then that's kind of like. Woo! Uh, but then there's all sorts of other things like radio stations playing adverts for glory hole where strangers become <laughs> friends. It's like, let's all go to the glory hole. Yeah. It's brilliant. Uh, 
yeah, I'd definitely play it again if they brought it out. I mean, they found the, they found the cord, who knows where they can go from it. Yeah, interesting to see. Or are they going for, um, are we going to get like a the Saints Row Complete Edition? So get Saints Row 5, and then after Saints Row 5, are we going to get like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 box set kind of thing? Or are we just going to get a 1, 2, 3, 4 box set leading up to 5? Interesting, interesting. Hmm. Uh, either way, either way, it's, uh, it's a nice, decent announcement for them to fix something that was made dodgy 10 years ago and put it out. If they put it out for a stupid price, maybe not. If they put it out for something cheap and cheerful, uh, Job's going to mm -hmm. actually... Uh, let's see... Uh, Are you looking for the price? Uh, I was just, I, I was kind of more looking for to see whether it will be an update, but they do actually say it doesn't sound like fans should expect the update, which will be free to current owners of Saints Row 2 on Steam. So I was thinking, are they going to push it out as a, as a new game, or are they going to give it out to people that have paid for it already? So everyone that has Saints Row 2 on Steam already will get it free, which is which is a yeah. Re really that's what I mean. If you can pick it up cheap, then you're in free. You're all right, then aren't you? Yeah, absolute spot on move. Spot on move. <laughs> but we have an exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> do we? We are now on Google Play. Hey! There you go. <laughs> We've been accepted. Yeah! So now, uh, as well as watching on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads, you can watch us live on YouTube. That's ice cream uploads. And we are now on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So everyone watching stuff. the stream right now, you are the first people in the world to know. You know at the same time as we know. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh. There was a clip. I'm just gonna I'm gonna see if I can open. It was uh, it was of me on your shoulder. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm watching this through the stream. Yeah, so there like... we go. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm just having to actually have a look at how much it is on PC. Uh, oh Nine ninety nine. Jesus wept. <laughs> you ask for baby. Sat on me. There you go. Not quite That's on the shoulder. That's four. Now still twenty there. pounds. But there you go. We deliver Ooh. on ice cream. Saints so Row the Third, that's podcast, actually cheaper. Afraid. And that's got better Trapped. reviews. I'm not even going to explain it. Just go check it no, out. I'll work that one out. Overwhelmingly <laughs> positive, Saints Row 3. I'm watching this through on this PC, yeah, yeah, and it's £7. <laughs> uh, that's amazing! Full disclosure, I wasn't listening to you. I was watching you sitting on my hand. I, I, was, I, no, I, was, I was more. That was more for the chat. I was just trying to keep the, uh, keep the voice going because I couldn't hear what you was putting because I muted the screen. Uh, but yeah, £7. For Saints Row 3 and £10 for Saints Row 2, even though Saints Row 2 is broken. I wonder if that price has changed. Is this something that shows you the price fluctuations? It'll be interesting to see whether that's gone up or not. I don't know. Uh, bit, whilst, would, you, whilst you may be looking to that, I will uh, bring up the next story then. Let's move ahead. Um, uh, actually, just before we do, let's jump into the chat. Uh, Mrs. Day's going to come in now and be like, will you stop throwing things? <laughs> Uh, she's uh, at work, so I'm safe for now. Although she is listening. Hi, babe. Uh, Central 2, nothing beats uh, killing a man with a giant dildo. Uh, sounds like a weekend for the babe. I uh, thought it was mad. Um, let's be honest. Uh, I love the streak in there. I did that proper movie laugh. I was looking to stop laughing at spraying raw sewage over people. Uh, you know what? I'd like to see a game made by Rockstar. Uh, you, know, you know you know, what? I'd like to see a game of made by Rockstar. A purge game where you have to survive until the purge ends. Would love that. See, that's pretty cool. That almost sounds Battle Royale-ish in, in some sense. Because, uh, like, not necessarily a Battle Royale where you all kill each other, but almost like a, a Battle Royale where you are all being hunted by weird dudes in masks. And, and as I say that, I'm going to jump into the next article because at the top of the screen, PlayStation Now is on and I keep seeing weird dudes in masks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we jump into the next article of the day, uh, written by Tom Phillips at Eurogamer. Uh, do you want me to jump through with this or are you, you going through it, babe? Uh, I can I can run through it. That's perfectly fine. It'll, get, it'll lube me throw up for a bit. Uh, Google Stadia release date detail. Now, this is definitely something that we have covered more than once on the scoop. I feel like it's a daily Google Stadia update. Uh, but this has been written by Tom Phillips on Eurogamer, and he goes on to say that Google has given its streaming box Stadia a release date of 19th of November. The service goes live at 5 p.m. UK time. We already knew that it would be launching next month, and how much it would cost to jump on board is now £119 or $129. For that price, you get the Stadia Founders Edition, which packs in the Chromecast Ultra for 4K and HDR streaming, a limited edition Night Blue controller, and a three-month subscription to to Stadia Pro for both you and a friend. 
Physical kits will uh, physical kits will be sent out. Uh, the order that they were purchased, Google says. This all comes prior to the free Stadia-based service, which you can now choose to wait or downgrade to when it arrives sometime in 2020. This will be available for more devices, Chrome browsers, Pixel 3, 3A phones, but is limited streaming of 1080, 60 frames per second. Dig- Digital Foundry went on to say that Google Stadia earlier this year was providing streaming analysis and controller impressions. Still confused how it'll all work? We've got a complete Google Stadia games list guide to get you started so uh this i think this is the trailer i'm just going to skip through this trailer to see if it's the one that i had actually watched last night <laughs> and uh it's answered a lot of questions for me to refer you want to write essays that uh, yes it is the same trailer messages is it would you like would you, would you like to go through the trailer um you know what? i've just had a quick check everyone listened uh, on podcast services you just got the audio of me uh, opening up the trailer and listening to an advert that i've just skipped through <laughs> but it's a two minute trailer so let's leave that just because the, the it, it the actually answers there. a lot of the questions that we discussed was it yesterday's show i yes. think it was yesterday's show uh so yeah i mean i watched the trailer last night i posted my thoughts on twitter to say that i will give you a definitive answer as to whether or not i'm excited for the stadia and i think after that watching that uh trailer i've, I've probably got more of an inkling now as to actually what it gives you because as of as of last week there wasn't that much that i actually knew about it uh it was more of a uh, it's just a stick that you put in and then you end up paying 40 pound for a game that may or may not work or may or may not drain your internet service uh and you can use i think i got off the back of yesterday's conversation about football manager and shales came in and said that it's the full version of football manager um, and you can actually use a mouse and keyboard with it as, as, as long as it's compatible with the Chromecast or the Google uh, browser that you're using. So that, again, is a massive plus in my eyes. If you, you are using the full, full version of Football Manager, you want to be able to use a mouse and keyboard purely because there's so much clicking and so much dragging the players across and searching for players, searching for staff, blah, blah, blah. It'll be a nightmare to just use a controller. I mean, it's, it was bad enough back in the early days of the 360 where you wanted to speak to your mate. You might not have had headsets. Or they used to have MSN back on uh, 360 days and you used to go in and you had to tab across using the analog stick or the, the D-pad and stuff like that. So you can use mouse and keyboard. Again, it's a massive plus. Am I excited for it? I'm getting there. Getting there. I think that's kind of um, a thought that kind of echoes across pretty much everyone I know that's uh, spoken around Stadia. I, I I love the idea, and 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 the the noises, the sounds are good. The price is obviously really good. Uh, One hundred nineteen dollars uh, to jump on board with Stadia, and that's that was that for the Founders Edition, which it mentions they get a Chromecast, uh, uh, a controller, and obviously Stadia itself, uh, and everything that comes with it. Uh, so that's the physical kit. So one hundred nineteen dollars, uh, one hundred nineteen pounds, one hundred twenty nine dollars, should I say? Not a bad cost for a for a. It's not for a next gen PC quality uh not streaming let's say all round gaming service let's put it that way mm. not a bad price um i think just a jump in there again as well sorry um i understand that there's going to be that with this you're going to get the the free month pass to be able to do stuff do you have to, for this stadia pro subscription do you need that to be able to play online or can you but like for instance if i bought borderlands and i wanted to play with you you didn't have Stadia Pro. I didn't have Stadia Pro, but we still had the game. Does that mean that we can still play with each other? Or is this Stadia Pro for, like, uh, games with gold kind of thing? Pass. Pass. Do you know Anyone in the chat that has the uh, time to uh, quick look into what Stadia Pro is, that would be uh, be good to know. Uh, I'd always assumed Stadia Pro was like the PS Plus. Uh, yeah, that's what I Xbox thought. Live. And particularly that, say, in a three-month subscription for you and a friend, but... But uh, it'd be good to know, unless that's, be that's their, their games library sort of access. Mm. So you pay for Stadia that's Pro to get access to the games. You get three months of games there, then, oh, you've got to start again. Because um, I was thinking oh, with that, because I know that we've got a lot of free-to-play games at the moment, things like Fortnite. Um, I say there's a lot. There is a lot, but off the top of my head, I can't actually remember it. Oh, you got things like uh, Warframe, uh, <laughs> things like that as well. Uh, any kind of free-to-play game, that game do you reckon that, that that'll you come? kept smashing bots in Realm Royale. Yeah. Realm Royale, another game. Another, Cuisine Royale, another game that I've been playing. Other Royales are available. Yeah. Fortnite oh, Battle I, Royale, eh, Realm Royale, yeah. Cuisine Royale. Any Battle Royale um, that's free to play. Do you reckon that'll be included uh, in Stadia? Do you reckon it'll be included just for the pro users? Or do you reckon it'll be fresh out the box as part of their game library? I mean, they've got they've got to have Fortnite on it. The hat absolutely day one must have Fortnite on it. Yeah, I reckon I reckon that's 
definitely going to happen uh, in terms of having Fortnite on it. I think for them as, as a business model, allowing people to buy the kit uh, and then not pay any sort of subscription, uh, but still have access to Fortnite, I think that is... Uh, and playing online and so on. I think that for them is probably a barrier for entry because what obviously your PSN uh, and your Xbox Live subscriptions give you is not just access to the games. Mm-hmm. It, that pays for the uh, the ongoing server maintenance, the upgrades, and and everything, uh, develop around it. I mean, I originally as a uh, as a cheap northern man was like, I don't want to pay to play games online against people. I want to be able to do that for for uh, PlayStation used to be free and now it costs. But now you kind of get into it. You kind of think, okay, well. All that doesn't happen for free. Either the games get expensive, or I play uh, yeah. pay for my one time um, service fee. So yeah, I think uh, obviously Google has large amounts of money and has massive servers and things. And I could see them potentially doing a PS version of starting off with nothing, maybe, and then a lot of loading in the uh, the need for it. But the Sony know that that's so difficult to do that they had to wait for a brand new generation before they could introduce that. Okay, was yeah. it was it PS4 that came with P? Was that one PS? Plus yeah, it, yeah, it was backwards compatible as well, so you could still use it on PS3s. But uh, to actually bring PS Plus out, I think it was a PS4. They didn't use it on PS3. Yeah, so Sony knew that a new generation would come to, to because even though for, for them as a business and and uh, in terms of sorting out their um, logistics, the cost is is valid. But to just drop it on someone and go, oh yeah, by the way, that thing that was free now costs you fifty quid. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> People are just going to go like, ah, whereas yeah. obviously if you bring it along with a new generation, that'd be fine. So I, I think I can't imagine Google Stadia starting without some sort of subscription fee to keep your yeah. online services there. I mean, I'd, uh, I'm, I'm de- I definitely want to dip my toes in. However, I mean, it's for me, it's, it's a choice between a Nintendo Switch or the Stadia Pro because they're both kind of portable and you can both play them anywhere. Apart from Stadia is going to be able to stream at 4K and play the latest releases like Borderlands 3, which is pretty much never going to come to um, Nintendo Switch. But never say never because we've now just got The Witcher, which apparently has been reviewing extremely well. The Witcher, the Witcher Witch. Downgrade. The Witcher Witch 3! <laughs> Witch yeah. Hunt. Um, Something like that. I mean, well, if, that, if the choice is between Stadia and the Switch, I already have a Switch, so there we go. Choice made. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can play Fortnite on it. <laughs> and Realm Royale! <laughs> and other Royales are available. And actually. other Royales. Just jump back I'm just having a look through the chat. Oh, I was, okay. I was, I was just about to say. Oh, ah! <laughs> uh, I can see White Gorilla. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, thinking of getting a PS4 Pro controller. Any suggestions? Uh, this is definitely a question for you, Mr. Graham Day, because I hear and can see in the background that you have a scuff controller up oh, there it is pop, pop, pop. Uh, good comment from spike though in response to that before i jump on it just stick with the normal pads i've tried uh, controllers that cost 100 150 pound they're nothing special and often break quicker than a standard pad um uh, i agree and disagree with that i do have a scuff controller uh i didn't pay for my scuff controller um i got my scuff controller from my friend at scuff uh so i obviously I'm speaking from a different level in the fact that I've not spent £200 on a scuff uh, controller. However, I do really, really like my scuff controller. Um, particularly when I... what I, I have dirt fingers. When I'm playing a game and I have to press down the right sticks, I could like align something up slowly onto the place and then I go to press the right stick and I don't just go click, I go move, click. Ah! <laughs> Every time, click. <laughs> I'm going to drop a marker on a map. Click! Ah! So having the ability to map R3 to the triggers on the back of the controller is really good for me. However, the bit that I say I also agree with is uh, Spike says they're nothing special and often break quicker than a standard pad. I do think mine is special. The shape, the form factor, um, all of that feels really good. Unless you've played with one, um, which obviously Spike says he has played with some uh, expensive pads. Unless you played with a scuff controller, I was like, meh, it was, yeah, fair. But the issue for me, uh, the good thing for me was being able to use those uh, triggers on the back so yes mm-hmm. i do like it however spike's uh, comment about off the breaking quicker um i have uh, downstairs my controller in an envelope ready to be posted to send back to scuff today because there is an issue with the stick however scuff have said yeah okay we'll, we'll fix that send it uh, just fill out the sheet says what it is we'll definitely look into it and we'll send it back to you so it depends on one of those things uh um the... See for me, I like the shape of it because it, it's, sh- it's shaped like a 360 controller, which was perfect for my massive hands. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've never actually used one, but Connor said that he, it was a must-have when he was playing COD competitive. Yeah, and that's the thing as well, is what do you want it for, uh, White Gorilla? If you just want a controller that's that's good, then as Spike says, the PS4 controller is fine. You, do, you do, If you just want to use the controller, that's fine. However, um, as me and Bib, uh, we were sat down, uh, I won't name names so he doesn't get harassed by people, but we were sat down with a guy from Scuff at Twitch, and... Uh, uh, the Twitch party at Gamescom, should I say. And he was talking about the scuff controllers, and it's not just about having button presses that mirror the same button presser that you can do with the controller, because great, that's fine. Connor mentioned um, the scuff was an absolute must-have, and, and he was saying some of the same stuff that uh, our our uh, scuff guy was saying, is the, the fact that if you're playing COD in certain ways, you, you want to jump, uh, spin, whatever and Connor was saying he has to like have his hands like a claw to hold on the controller yeah. to be able to do everything which just blew my mind scuff allows for you to uh get it set up so say if you want to jump spin uh change weapon headshot and it's basically three four button presses at once and you've only got like those three fingers because these two are holding the controller um you need more fingers and that's where scuff adds to your game so if you want to get to the point where you can do multiple things at once then Pro controllers are good. They, they are if you were just using it as a normal person. And I love the idea of being able to do all that, but I know full well that I'm not going to, one, have the time to do that, or two, ever get good at doing that. So I'm just going to stick with the normal controller. So whilst I do have a scuff controller, I am just using the paddles for R3. <laughs> R3. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, I'm not getting the full use out of it, but that is what uh, a scuff controller or um, any other controllers of, of similar uh, ilk they do they're for that so don't just get it just to get um don't some fps comps ban them because of that um it's not so much that i think most fps comps ban them because they don't want things outside of uniformity um mm. if you let scuff controllers in then why can't you let something else in and, and the scuff controller is a reskin ds4 as far as i'm aware it's an actual ds4 pad that's been deconstructed and and molded into scuff stuff which is why it works because the, the innards and stuff are all ds4 it's just that they then add to that um as far as i'm aware i could be wrong um but yeah uh wrapping that up again i did kind of say it like three times but uh was it white gorilla was that was that you know yeah, white yeah, gorilla. Was white gorilla, yeah. if you want to use all the buttons as normal then you don't really need a scuff controller if you want a different shape like an xbox style controller then an impact is good however if you want to use different uh, button press combinations like someone would if they were playing competitive cod or because uh, that gives you the edge undoubtedly then a controller like that is good uh, uh anyway there we go we've digressed let's let's move on so we've moved on from uh, google stadia let's get in to our next uh, article and i'm just about to read it as if you can see it but it's not on screen but it is now so from matt kim at ign Everything announced at Riot's League of Legends 10th anniversary celebration. This is a doozy. Is it a doozy? I haven't read this article. It's a doozy of an article, mate. The amount of stuff that uh, Riot announced yesterday, you got to skim it. You'll be here all day reading it. It's a long scroll, but it's so good. Like how Riot came up with this yesterday. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. Sit down, get comfy. Grab a brew uh, as we jump in. Riot Games celebrated 10 years of League of Legends today with a big blowout live stream. The big anniversary show featured several new announcements from Riot Games, including a new champion in League of Legends and multiple multiple new video game announcements. Interesting. Some of the announcements Riot Games made today were expected, like Riot's long-rumoured fighting game. Other projects were newly announced today. Here's everything Riot Games announced during today's 10th anniversary live stream. Uh, so, new League of Legends champion, Senna. League of Legends will have a new champion for, uh, for the Rift next month. Fans rightfully guessed online that the new champion would be Senna, and they are correct. Senna was originally uh, trapped in Thresh's Lantern, as revealed in Lucian's story, but she's ready to join the fray. Senna will have marksman-like playstyle, and she's the newest uh, support character to join Riot's massive League of Legends roster. Senna will be available in public beta on October 29th, and will be officially live on November 10th. Um, Riot Games also announced big changes coming uh, to the Rift. On October 22nd in the beta servers, Riot will introduce Rise of the Elements, which are gameplay changes focused around the ele uh, elemental drakes, as in, like, uh, Hotline Bling? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the changes go live on November 20th. Riot is also bringing back Ultra Rapid Fire, but with full champion select as limited time game mode, uh, as a limited time game mode even. If you have Riot, uh, if you have a Riot account before October 15th, 6pm PT, you'll receive 10 days of in-game gift every day until the official 10th of 
uh, 10th anniversary on October 27th. Woo, this reading is getting somewhere. Okay. Uh, League of Legends uh, Hero Shooter Project A announced. This and is just, the big one. I've got to say, we just had in the chat. Super excited for Project A. Connor, spoilers before we get there. Chill out, mate. <laughs> Riot Games announced Project A, a competitive character-based tactical shooter for PC. The game is set on a near-future Earth and includes a roster of characters, each with unique abilities. Riot is promising more information sometime in 2020. I did see a clip from a Riot... Uh, I don't know if it's a Riot dev or a Riot community guy. I don't really uh, follow much to do with Riot games, in all honesty. However, I did see something that looked kind of um, Counter-Strike-ish earlier on. Is, yes. that, is that this? Is Yes. So basically, what for me, what it looks like is Counter-Strike and Overwatch kind of put together. So each character or each player or each whatever it is that you're going to be using or whatever you're selecting. It looks like they have their own characteristics. So like someone may be able to block or throw something. Uh, but yeah, kind of saying the same. Overwatch and CS:GO had a baby project. Hey, I I can't remember <laughs> in this in this that that you that you've got your mouse hovered over there. I don't know whether or not um, you can actually watch that, and it gives you a a little small clue. But I mean, on the Twitter on the Twitter feeds that I had a look at this morning, it looks dynamite. I, I would be 100% in for this. It looks great. Well, we won't um, go through the video on on the stream just obviously because we will alienate all of our. Uh audio listeners but feel free to go check out project a a new hero shooter announced by uh, riot games we'll move on then so riot's fighting game project l wow these names are uh, kind of like <laughs> i mean who's thought of all of these uh, i wonder what project z is gonna be <laughs> so riot's fighting game project l is detailed sort of in brackets uh, project l is riot's long rumored fighting game set in the league of legends universe Riot says Project L is in early development despite being the longest rumoured project in Riot's lineup. Officially, uh, Riot officially announced the fighting game at this year's EVO tournament, but the company says there's no further information at this time. Uh, so then on to Mysterious League of Legends social game, Project F announced. And for those of you listening on audio services, um, go on, quickly, quickly to yourself, say it out loud. What are the three projects? What were the letters? Go on, I bet you don't know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> although in in reality it actually spells out ALF which that's it confirmed Riot is bringing back the puppet series from the 80s slash 90s <laughs> Project ALF ALF here we go it doesn't say that in the uh, IGN article uh, by the way that's just me running my big fat mouth okay Legends of uh, Run Terror is Riot's free to play card game actually I've skipped one uh Social Game Project F announced. Uh, Riot also announced the mysterious Project F. Like the other new, uh, new announcement Riot made today, there's only a code name available for Project F, but Riot is promising a new social experience where players can explore the world of Run Terror with friends. Is this a mobile game? A top-down RPG? Who knows? Um, so there's a... Okay, let's just start skipping over titles. Uh, Legends yeah. of Run Terror is a free-to-play card game. Wild Rift is a League of uh, is League of Legends for mobile and consoles. Team Fight Tactics is coming to mobile, so that's obviously an auto battler, um, which I believe is is what the is trying to be put as uh, the is that the industry industry in it? Oh, actually, better known as but that's a, there you go. Um, auto chess. Auto chess is a game. That's this is something that I've I've read previously. Uh, having never played auto battlers or auto chess or team fight tactics, auto chess is an actual game, and they're, they're all classified as auto battlers. So. Team Fight Tactics is an auto-battle game made by Riot and is coming to mobile. League of Legends animated series Arcane has been announced. Wow, we're still going. League of Legends yeah. eSports manager. Uh, uh, yes, it's a real thing. I'm guessing that's a manager game. to like, More Almost like, like football there is, manager, but to manage eSports teams. Well, there, there is actually an eSports manager game and it came out on PC and is on the Switch. I don't think it's a League of Legends one, though. Uh, it's literally just called eSports manager and you can pick a shooting one. Uh, a MOBA game or something else and you become an esports manager I think they've just kind of cloned that and just stuck their Riot games over the top of it or something I don't know lol and that's the uh, game not me just responding with banterous humour uh, anyway <laughs> moving on League of Legends Origins is a feature length documentary series about League of Legends we won't, we won't go into that because that's that's a long old article but yeah. there you go so Matt Kim from the at, top down you... then Sorry, I keep interrupting you because yeah, I never know when it. you're going to stop because there's a slight delay. I never know when you're going to stop. <laughs> and I just keep on talking and talking and talking. And talking. Um, okay, I will just chip in here. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, like wait. A... <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> top line, it looks like Riot has released about 10 different things yesterday. So we had an anime series. We had uh, a new first-person shooter. We had a new MOBA game. Uh, sorry, mobile game. Uh, we've got a new League of Legends esports game, 
Uh, geez, it, the list just goes on. I mean, that's... For their 10th anniversary, I don't think it could have gone better for him. There's literally pretty much something for everybody there. Um, not Spike. <laughs> Apart yeah. from something. Uh, uh, League of Legends, Resident Sleeper. Uh, mobile, Resident Sleeper. <laughs> uh, and it, what, is there anything in there that does tickle your fancy Spike? I mean, I must admit, I am I am more in the realms of what uh, Spike is saying. Maybe Project A, the, um, the Counter-Strike-esque sort of game, might get me... Uh, interested but my issue with counter-strike is it looks amazing but the skill gap on it is so severe that i'm like i'm just going to carefully look around this corner to see if there is any impending threats from n i'm dead ah okay well that's that was a yeah. good game but the beauty of cs i mean obviously i've been picking connor's brain because he's obsessed with the game uh it's it's good because you have it, it annoyed me to, to start off with uh, because you can only have like two or three games a day because um, it puts you into different categories so if you were an absolute noob and you'd never played the game before you'd go into team deathmatch blah blah you get used to it and then you go into rank matches your rank matches are actually capped for like the first 10 to 15 games I think it is and then you actually get put into a category of people that are in your skill gap so if you're half decent at shooting games then eventually you're going to get into a better tier with better players, but you'll just end up racking up kills in ranked <laughs> matches. Because I think I'm pretty, I, I think I'm all right at shooting games. I've got used to using mouse and keyboard, and I can kind of hold my own on Counter Strike, but that's because I'm playing with noobs at the moment. I imagine when I get into an half de decent category, I'm probably going to get my ass handed to me, but I enjoy playing it because I'm playing with people. My skill gap at the moment are oh, I'm slightly better than some of the players that are there, so I can maintain quite a high. Uh, um, rank in within the match, but I'm no, I'm absolutely no pro, and I'm 100% confident that if I was to get put into mistakenly put into a rank one game, that I'm going to get my ass handed to me. Um, but this game, it looks like a combination of both that and Overwatch. Overwatch, I actually quite like as well. So I'm looking forward to it. If it's if it's done well, then it'll go. It'll be a really really good game. And I've got absolutely. Uh, contrasting oh, opinion from Spike in the chat. You said you like CSGO on Overwatch. He says, uh, Spike says, when people say that about games, I always find that fans of those games never like it. So, for example, CSGO fans will say they don't like the Overwatch stuff, and the Overwatch fans will say they don't like the CSGO style stuff. Oh, uh, where have you heard that comparison before? Does it involve two football games? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 although he does, he does go on to a, a comment that I was chuckling at just a second ago whilst you were... Uh, Reading then. Esports manager. Hire live event manager Bibby. Plus five shouting. <laughs> Can we sit back down, please? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I mean, if, if people want to get up in the grills and start giving it the big one, then they're going to get some big ginger bloke at the front shouting at him. Plus five for <laughs> volume. Uh, Connor says that it stinks of a lunchtime game for me, Bibby and Lewis. Absolutely. It's right up our three avenues. I mean, I, I, I really like Overwatch and I absolutely love Counter Strike, so. Merge them both together, you get one happy trio of people. Uh, we will keep motoring forward, though. Let's let's move on. We did touch on this yesterday, so we will step away from the uh, the riot content purely because I don't really know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I expect we will find out more more and more as we get more on Project Alf over the few uh, upcoming months. But for now, we'll jump into something that we covered yesterday. Fortnite's black hole is over. Um, this is from Riley McLeod and at, there we go, Kotaku. Uh, I, 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 I never like the fact that you get ads sitting at the top of the, uh, the screen, but not the actual game title. I mean, that goes against my years and years of user experience testing, but there we go. Anyway, Riley McLeod at uh, Kotaku UK says, after roughly a day and a half, Fortnite's black hole is over. The servers just went offline. There you go. Uh, just went offline? Okay, okay. At, at around 9 a.m. UK time, uh, with thousands of people around the world staring at Fortnite's swirling black hole, the game suddenly blinked to a loading screen with a message uh, message reading, Fortnite servers are currently undergoing maintenance. Ah, I get now. Uh, please try again later. The servers currently read is offline, presuming un undergoing maintenance for next season. In a normal Fortnite season, this is pretty standard. Developer Epic takes the game offline between roughly 9 and 11 a.m. to update things. I'm not surprised to see there be downtime here, but after all the waiting and social media blackouts around the black hole, this feels pretty anticlimactic. Was the uh, was a big event uh, was a big event inside us all along. Um, I I'm struggling to take this in. 
Uh, anyway, I'm awake at four in the damn morning, so I'm going to say yes, because I need this. Uh, some folks on Twitter said the new cinematic trailer played for them in the lobby, but I was unable to access that as pressing relaunch just took me out of the game, which is currently updating. Here's what folks are seeing, and this is a link then to the trailer posted by Fortnite on uh, social media. Following the game's end of season event, Fortnite turned from a game of weird characters and 10 year old teammates into a swirling black hole. Uh, it then, to, to the internet's collective shock, stay, uh, stayed that way. Okay, we, can, we know what's happened uh, uh, with everything previously, so let's let's jump back, let's jump back. So, uh, that doesn't really kind of cover everything we needed, because that was obviously from 10am yesterday. Things have moved forward since then. The black hole has gone, and Fortnite Chapter 2 is back. Uh, I remember this, and I know this because I watched Jack from the Ice Cream Team play in his first game on the uh, on chapter two yesterday in the office the whole collective ice cream studio was um stood around watching jack get all the way to the top three with zero kills and not a single player experienced oh, no it's about top five actually and then we realized that jack was in a lobby with bots <laughs> just kind of <laughs> just kind of like jack absolutely Bam! Snipe headshot! And it was a good shot, to be fair. But then the player that he just shot just kind of stood in the open and decided, I'm going to use a shield potion. So Jack f smashed him, smashed someone else. And the other two people that were in the game lasted longer than Jack. Yeah. <laughs> GG's. GG's. Although, to be, uh, to be fair, the guy well, that killed him had 13 kills, so fair enough. Fair enough. Calm down, mate. Calm down. I can't, that couldn't have been a bot then, could it? No, he was, de he was a definite person. Uh, just Jack just showing off. came fresh from not having played the game for months to a guy that just happened to have smash 13 people or bots on his way to meeting Jack, so unlucky. Okay. Um, How's Graham and Studio Bibby, says Shogun Ash Live. And yes, for those of you, we actually explained this, although we did last week. For those of you listening on podcast services, I'm broadcasting from my home studio, and Bibby's broadcasting from the ice cream studio. So uh, I'm kind of full screen, and Bibby, uh, Bibby is picture in picture, which is kind of why you might have heard me mentioning earlier on that he was sat on my hand. The clip will be, if not already, on social media. That's uh, twitter.com forward slash ice cream uploads. Uh, make sure you go check that out. Uh, so, Bibby, are, are you going to jump back in? To the uh, I am more than likely will. I downloaded it on my Switch. I think I'm just obsessed with playing on my Switch at the moment. Obviously, I'm, uh, I'm going to use the V word. I'm only playing my PS4 for Volta at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my, my Switch is getting a pound at the moment. Uh, I play him currently, currently in like a, a a really good football manager save, and I downloaded Fortnite so I can uh, have a go at that. Uh, well, I'm travelling down to somewhere this weekend. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to play it. I'll tether it to my phone. Um, it's, it pissed me off a little <laughs> It pissed me off a little. I've just seen what's <laughs> just come up on the screen. Uh, it pissed me off a little bit, actually, because we could have had a nice little exclusive this morning, but nobody in the t nobody from the ice cream team told us that the game had gone back live because um, we were talking about it as it was going back live, as if it was still down, and then we got upstairs, and everyone was like, yeah, it's live. No worries. <laughs> I think so we could have talked about that. I think it was like... like bang on kind of thing. I think we'd have had to like, oh, wait a minute, we were going to end, but now actually, uh, I think you find that, uh, yes. New drinking game, have, take a shot a world time, exclusive. <laughs> New drinking game, take a shot every time Bibi says Volta and every time G says PUBG. <laughs> we were talking yesterday, we needed like like a, like a ping, ping, ping. Uh, so, yeah. But yeah. I mean, the only time that I actually ever got a win uh, as a solo was on the Nintendo Switch, which presumably I'm playing against a load of children, uh, which says a lot about my <laughs> skill level. Uh, but yeah, I definitely will at some point. I've, I mean, I, I watched, I seen Myth post a tweet yesterday, and it's of him yeeting someone <laughs> off the top of it. Actually, actually <laughs> the top. do I have that? Uh, it was, uh, it was hilarious. To be fair, I mean, we were talking about you being able to pick yeah. people up. We actually thought it'd just be your own teammates, but it turns out that anyone that you're down, you can just pick them and lob them to wherever you yeah. want, which. It makes good viewing, really. Uh, um, you probably don't get the benefit of that, Bibi, but I have a yeet button on my stream deck, so I've just gone... Ah, okay. There we go. I don't know if that's coming through. Hopefully that's coming through the stream. If not, I'm just sat here going... On my own for no reason. Uh, anyway, no uh, I think... Uh, I've said yesterday, I think this will pull me back in. I did watch a, a little bit of the doc yesterday, just as he rage quit and said that he hates this game and quit it out <laughs> and went to PUBG. Which, what a surprise. Which I was happy with, as you could see. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that said, I mean that it's still there's there's a cool few little bits in it. You got they've got meaningless stuff like when you when you're using a med kit, you're not just going poof. Oh, I've used a med kit. You kind of like open it up and it looks like you're like munching on snacks, almost daisy-ish, like when you're eating yeah. beans from the can. It kind of looks 
decent enough out. So, so, so a little bits like that. But then you've got the, uh, the the like dolphin sort of swimming stuff. It looks pretty cool. You've got speedboats like which had land boats as well, uh, which is that all all looks decent. I would like to try all that. The 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 only thing that kind of that catches my attention though, which I haven't actually seen, I've only read about, is there are I assume more vending machines like in terms of where you can change your so say if you've got a, a sniper rifle and it's a do you get white sniper rifles so if you've got a white sniper rifle you can pay x amount of wood or steel or brick to upgrade to a better sniper rifle which gives you a better chance of winning as someone that purely plays the uh, not purely but mainly plays the game from an attacking standpoint not a building standpoint the fact that i can get mm -hmm. rid of my building materials to focus on um, combat is a really good sort of trade-off for me. However, it's it's not going to be as weighted as as much as I want it. I know that that I'm thinking, oh, well, I can get rid of my materials and get a gun, and then it'd be like, oh, 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 oh. oh wait, he's, <laughs> he's got a wooden fence. Now what am I gonna do? So yeah, but yeah. I mean, I wish that I wish to segregate the the players so you'd be able to have attackers versus defenders, and you just have everyone who likes to build in one part, and then everyone who just likes to have a nice shoot 'em up in the other. Because I'm terrible at building. That's like ninety percent of the game. If you're good at building, you're probably gonna score quite highly. But I'm not. I hate it. I can't do it. Like I watched my brother doing it, and he's just like moving the right analog stick round in like a 360 whilst throwing up these things, and he's just jumping. He's so good at it. Meanwhile, you're Hopefully moving I'm the uh, analog it. stick round in a 360 while throwing up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can't do spinny stuff. A fun fact about Bibbit, he throws up on teacups. <laughs> just no generally, joke. in Anything kitchens, you have a teacup. Yeah. Boom, bam, <laughs> blah. Uh, yeah, I can't do it. Anything that spins. Regular. Teacup and saucers, nope. Sorry, uh... I'm chatting over you now. Um, just realised why Graham likes PUBG so much. It's practically a question to him. Fancy going to the PUBG? Have you have you not seen the pub? Okay, let me let me give you an experience. For those of you listening on podcast services, uh, I have a green screen set up, so it's not going to look quite right from where I am because I don't have the green screen behind me. Um, but we have a green screen uh, green screen scene called the pub with G, uh, which has been put together by uh, Craig, Mister Pitt. Um, AKA the Lurgy spreader at Ice Cream Uploads. So let's see if I can get rid of me off screen. Where's the camera, 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 camera? I can't find a camera. Is it that one? Boom. There we go. So there we go. Chicken dinner served here. Rarely, but they occasionally do. So there you go. We do have uh, the pub with G, as uh, Craig called it. There you go. It's so good, that. Intro. Pow. So we do have the pub with G. So yeah, that, that is a thing. Anyway, swiftly moving on, because uh, we ha we are running out of time. Um, and seeing as he's mentioned Switch probably 52 times on the stream already, I will let, I'll let Bibi run ahead with Turn it this. over here. <laughs> Just going to sing a Will Smith song there, so okay. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, an article that's on GameSpot. <laughs> this is an article that's on uh, GameSpot, uh, written by Kevin. I cannot pronounce that. Sorry, Kev. I'm just going to call you Kevin for now. <laughs> uh, you can all see it on the screen anyway. Feel free to read the show notes. You can head over there and find it for yourself. Uh, but new Pokemon Sword and Shield info is coming tomorrow. Uh, new research update is dropping October 16th, which is the day. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield arrive on Nintendo Switch next month, and the Pokemon company has more to share about the game ahead of their launch. The company announced that the new Gala Research update video will drop tomorrow, October 16th, promising some more details about the Switch's RPGs. Uh, the Pokemon Company hasn't teased what we can expect from tomorrow's update, only that we know it'll drop 6am Pacific Time and 9am Eastern Time. Uh, previous uh, videos have been revealed with the new Gen 8 Pokemon and the game mechanics, so we we'll presumably get our first look at some of these in the video, although nothing has been confirmed as yet. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of it because it's just going on about the 24-hour live stream that was largely uneventful, as a lot of people have <laughs> confirmed. Um, so, yeah, it looks like we're going to get some more Pokemon stuff tomorrow. Um, I'm probably going to get this game on release. Not sure. Depends on what situation I'm in as to get into. Uh, how many games I've actually got? Because I seem to have a lot that I'm not able to play at the moment. Um, but Pokemon is definitely something that I will be picking up as I absolutely love it. I haven't played any of the ones on 3DS. Samantha did, though. Um, I'm kind of bored of the Pokemon formula as it stands. I wish I'd do something different with it, which I'm hoping this is what a video is going to explain what's potentially different with it. I'm just bored of the same 
stuff like go to this place find that pokemon battle arrival that started at the same time as you he gets to the the indigo four or whatever it is that you're so gonna you're, be you're, you're my rival and you start in the same town as me and we're both kids and what's your name is yeah. it gary no it's harry Dave. It, <laughs> and the next time it's barry and then Ka- carry and other names that rhyme with gary and yeah, it's just yeah. boring like i'm gonna play it because i like pokemon games it's just boring i want something else i want something more we talked about it i think last wednesday where they had like the pokemon mmo stuff where you could just get your pokemon and then it literally is just an open world game you can go and do that that is what i want give me that people have been creating these games for people who are bored of the current format please just give us something that we can actually look forward to and not something that's just going to be the same monotonous boring shit (laughs) i can't think i couldn't think of a better way to describe it but uh, Listen for the most elaborative phrases on Ice Cream Uploads. <laughs> Boring shit. Uh, it is though. Like anybody that's played a Pokemon game in the last ten years, you can just pick up the same game, different name, different Pokemon, same shit. Be interesting to see if Shogun Ash is still in the chat. I know he's been playing through the more recent games on stream. That's Shogun Ash live on Twitch, friend of the channel. Uh, it's kind of open world now, I think, with this one. He says, um, but I must admit, unless. The formula changes. I am. I'm not gonna jump in. I, I did pick up. Let's go, Eevee, Pikachu. Well, it was the Pikachu that I got uh, with the Switch, and I did play some of that on flights to and from events like E3 and and co. Um, but even that, knowing that I'm playing my bread and butter, the first 150, 151 Pokemon, still I haven't finished it because it's the same repetitive, same thing. I've done it. I've done it. I did it on. Uh, on the Game Boy, I did it on the Game Boy Color. Uh, I then started it on Leaf Green, uh, and it was just kind of like a fire red. It was I, I played, but like yeah, I've, I've I want the same experience again, but but in a different mm-hmm. thing. So not the same experience. I want I want the same content, but in a yeah. different experience, and and that. I think overwhelmingly <laughs> a lot of people want that. Said we aren't speaking for the entire internet because I know that there will be thousands of people going. <laughs> He yeah. said it's boring uh, shit. He's heathens. Boring shit. How dare he? Like, I know there's things like TMs, um, yeah. I, which I didn't realise until listening to someone on Kind of Funny the other week said that TMs don't exist in the game now. You you can give uh, like Pokemon. You don't have to have a Pokemon in your party. Like you, you said, you can wander down the track and you'll get to, oh, there is a tree covering this one bit of gap in between the fences. Mm. How do we get past this? Bulbasaur used cut. And it's like, oh, but Bulbasaur's in my PC back in Viridian City so I'm going to have to get on my bike and yeah. for about 20 minutes back that way and then get bulbs on come back and go pow and go through it and, you, and then you get to water and you need your Lapras that's got surf and it's like fuck <laughs> back 20 minutes again <laughs> uh, so, so you know the, I, want it, I want them to give it I mean this is a stupid way of saying it at the moment but I want them to give the Bethesda treatment. I want them to give it the Skyrim treatment, as in, like, just give us the biggest map that you could possibly do, throw in a load of NPCs, throw in a load of towns, and just let me just go around and just explore stuff for myself. I don't want to go in a particular direction at a certain time to go and find the certain certain quest, shall we call it, in Pokemon, which isn't really a quest, but... Uh, for God's sake, Graham! <laughs> uh, but, yeah, just give me something else. Just give me something else. <laughs> uh, the formula won't change which is a shame they add new battle mechanic each time and they just get more gimmicky i get confused as soon as they introduce the pokemon pseudo wudo which was basically a fallen branch who could counter water and electricity new pokemon unbeatable twig <laughs> <laughs> isn't there a ponytail that looks like a unicorn now uh yes there's the glarian ponytail which I'd, i'm not gonna find it on stream i'll let you guys uh, do that but I'll, I'll show you the image of it from this video so there's a glarian ponytail look at that that's pretty much uh, like a, a pinky purpley unicorn <laughs> so is, is that is that a fairy type no it's something like a like a, a normal or a fighting type or something it's, it's not a fairy type but then you get like a, a new evolution of coughing and wheezing some purple blob with green toxic sludge coming out of it and you're like okay that's poison pokemon absolutely and it's like no this is a fairy type and you're like yeah that's huh? stupid it's so dumb <laughs> anyway anyway uh, but I digress. We, this is a, this ne- this next article, though, one hundred and ten percent has to be read about the man with the hat. And those of you that are taking a, a nice little score chart down at home, feel free to add as many times as you like, <laughs> little marks. Yes. Um, so, up, oh, up, up. That's not the right button. That's the button. There we go. PC update five point one now on the test servers for PUBG. 
So no, uh, no um, uh, journalists are right for credits on this one because this is taken directly from PUBG's website. This went live this morning, so naturally we're going to throw it in at the end of the show just so that I can mention PUBG, 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 PUBG. Do you know what? Every time we should have it, we should have like a, like a bullet hit in the pan <laughs> sort of noise. PUBG, 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 PUBG. PUBG. Uh, so... Throw down the gauntlet literally in PUBG Season 5. We're zooming into Miramar for a season filled with new content, new hotspots, and new strategies. Push the pedal and test your metal on new ramps and stun ob obstacles. Old friends get new uh, new life with a utility upgrade to the Winchester 94. And don't be thrown by the news, but melee weapons are now throwable. Don't panic! I mean, absolute pun spectacular. Jeroen, if you are watching this, since when did you start writing news content for... Uh, yeah, PUBG, because that's, that's like three or four cheesy puns in there. That's definitely in the uh, realms of Jerusalem. So, want anything from the vending machine, which we've just spoken about, actually, on Fortnite, so interesting. Uh, we've added a new type of loot station to restock your backpacks and added item throwing between teammates to keep everyone in bandages and energy drinks. You can find out more about these additions, new quality of life, up, uh, life updates, and our latest Survivor Pass Badlands, as well as learn about all, uh, all about a very expensive-looking Mirado in the patch notes below. And then it goes on to give a video from T.S. Chang, executive producer uh, in charge of development on PUBG. I won't go through all of that, um, but what I will kind of do to summarise is say, essentially, the, in the Miramar is like the, the desert map, sort of that sort of Mexico vibe. Um, uh, there's like luchador sort of boxing slash wrestling rings, um, like where you can go on landing in Picado, and there's another one in, in another area of the map so it's that's the kind of feel that it gives and this uh, update is all about improving miramar so there's the skin uh, uh the reskinning of the map so changing some of the stuff getting rid of some um uh, like random bits that were in the way so they had like decorative crap like trash on the floor which was all, all well and good but if you're running into it suddenly you hit like a can on the floor or a bin bag and you can't get past it so they've they've kind of cleaned out a lot of that crap whilst adding some cool stuff in that's quite useful so the ability to almost i, I instantly think of watching csgo streams where you can lob a gun to someone or lob some bandages to someone or something like that uh, so that's quite cool but then they've added in the middle of the map there's, a, there's somewhere called hacienda and it's basically imagine if you've ever seen Yes, Hacienda. Uh, if you've seen uh, uh, Better Call Saul, not Better Call Saul. No, I think it was in Breaking Bad, actually. Or maybe it was Better Call Saul. Either way, there's a drug dealer in the Breaking Bad world, um, and he basically has a house in the middle of nowhere. And Hacienda kind of looks like that. Uh, and they've kind of, like, I think they've kind of not necessarily taken a nod to um, uh, Breaking Bad, but that sort of, like, the fact that people see it as, like, a, a drug house. In the uh, garage, there is a gold plated like Murado. so as, as you, not plated but a gold Murado. you can drive around the map you can get Murado, which is a big car they've now added a gold Murado, so yeah you can drive around like like a mofo so you land in kill everyone and leave it a gold car uh rebalancing in terms of adding things like um uh vending machines uh, in in terms of making the ammo and weapons and stuff that drop fine but adding more uh functions like the vending machines i think did, do these exist in fortnite in terms of can you go to a vending machine and just like hit it and get like um shield portions or slurp juices or anything like that. is that a thing um because that I, I think i think you had to give up some of your materials for whatever was in the vending machine so you could give up like 150 wood to get a uzi or something like that uh, if i remember rightly it's been a while okay. since i played it. Um, it it looks good though the patch notes look really good it's quite detailed uh there's a lot in here like i just i just started wetting myself nearly because one of us if you could dodge a wrench you can dodge a pen <laughs> does it say that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like as you go down, which is obviously a massive nod. Oh, uh, that's one of my favourite films, Dodgeball. Yeah, well, I can't believe it works on Windows ninety four. That's great. It works on Windows ninety four. Yeah, Win ninety four. It just keeps on saying that all the time. <laughs> you absolute banana! <laughs> I was uh, like, as I'm scrolling so... down, <laughs> as I'm scrolling down, there's at the very bottom picture. I don't know if I've not noticed this, but it looks like it kind of looks like a swastika, which uh, I don't think is the purpose of the image. However. Mm, it probably would have avoided anything that kind of looks like that. I they being black, black, or black, white, and red. I uh, I don't see that. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a swirl. <laughs> it's uh, probably wouldn't have got away with that, but yeah. Uh, the, moving swiftly on, the uh, the patch notes are really good. I like it. There's a lot in here because it's been a long time since PUBG, as you very well know. Um, but I... yeah, it it looks good. I mean, I like the zombie mode. It says that since the last patch, so I'm guessing it's been in there a while. But 
I've never even heard of that, so I've got it installed on my PC. I probably haven't had it updated in a oh, while, but the zombie mode is will. ridiculously good. In, in, is it good? Uh, in terms of, it's a custom game, so so you um, can jump into. You can make a definitely looks like a swast. I can't see it. I, I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to get you to kind of like highlight it me off screen so we don't uh, promote mm. Nazism. Is that a word? Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought now because we're talking about Nazism. Uh, what were we saying? Oh, that was it, the zombie mode. Um, yeah, basically, you have a mode humans versus zombies, and the zombies, have, you can set them to have, like, stupid health, and they can jump really high, and they can punch really hard, and they can run really fast. Um, mm-hmm. But they can't pick up any weapons. They can't get any meds. Uh, the health regenerates, but they can't pick up meds and use meds. They can't get any vehicles. So if they stand at one end of the map and the circle goes to the bottom, you've basically got a zombie sprint all the way down. But it gets really good because you can put in, you put in like five zombies and then you get like 95 humans so all these humans can drop and one zombie seems like a pack of humans it can go blah, blah, blah. but the yeah. idea is for the humans to try kind of like get together in like a bundle uh to try obviously smash these mega zombies yeah. so it works out as a, it, it's a really it's a really is good it game. like hard mode uh kind of yeah apart from all of the what's the, um, what's the, the purpose humans. of it like what's the end goal what's that What's the end goal of it? Uh, just it's just to win zombies versus humans. The zombies, um, you start off usually with less, uh, less, uh, massively less, so like five versus a hundred, uh, five versus ninety-five or whatever. Oh, I get it, I get it. So you can either start off as a zombie or a human. Yeah. And then you have to take out. Ah, and okay. You've got to beat the opposite team. I get it. Um, so yeah. it's still a death match, battle royale kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a. Uh, a guy I hosted on Wednesday called Halifax, he does customs um, on a Sunday, and we usually put him on um, Sunday morning-ish, afternoon-ish, and he goes through and he'll do stuff like, um, he has he plays loads of different custom game modes, so he has one called Mad Max, where you can only shoot at people when you're in a vehicle, or on a vehicle, you can't shoot on the floor, so you can't reposition, you can't hide behind a vehicle and shoot, you have to be on it or in it, um, and then he, uh, Zombies is one of the game modes that he played, and the, the updates to Zombies, have changed it now so you get like it's like a green sort of zombie-ish pulse on the screen when you're a zombie you've got no clothes on you've just got like zombie skin apart from like little tighty whitey pants uh, and you've got like dead face and stuff it looks really cool it looks really cool um, the bits that I I mean I've got my phone here because I did uh, mention it uh, uh, I did make notes earlier so throwing meds and weapons to teammates throwing melee weapons at enemies so you can pan someone from distance <laughs> uh, and then the fact that, that Win- Windows 94 now has a 2.7x scope. Uh, plus the spike strips as well, so you can lay spike strips across roads, which will help take out vehicles. And then the Golden Mirada Hacienda. All that kind of stuff is... its Most of it is quality of life improvements, which is really good to see. The fact that they're not going, oh, we've added a brand new mode or whatever. It's like we've had some cool community um, stuff. And what, they, what they're trying to do with this update as well, reading through those notes, is they're trying to make... Miramar have a bit more of a story, a bit more meaning, a bit more mm. uh, background, and that's what they've they suggest that they've put a few things in there that help build that because they've they've started to build some law for um, the first map Erringel. It looks like they're starting to move on to Miramar for that, which is all pretty cool. It's all pretty cool. About two weeks, we'll probably get it on consoles. Yeah, that was my next question. It's obviously that's his all for PC. When are you, when are you going to be able to play? Because I know you play a lot more on PlayStation than you do um, on PC. Yeah, I mean it's it's on test service for people that want to play it now. Uh, for people that are on consoles, they have previously said that they're working uh, so that they can now roll out updates two weeks later. So if it comes out on PC, mm-hmm. it'll come out on consoles two weeks later, as opposed to six to eight weeks, which is which is decent. Um, hopefully, it'll fix some of the issues that I've got with it at the moment. Um, I'm just going to jump back through the chat. I just re- oh, we've got that one. Uh, da, 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 da. It's kind of open world. Oh, no. But we'll, on. we'll jump back to Pokemon. It's kind of open world now, I think, with this one. Oh, no. We've gone through that. Adventurist. I get confused as to the introduce the Pokemon. So, oh, no. We've gone through that. <laughs> oh, that was the Adventurist. Uh, Alistair that said that. I thought that was show. Um, uh, perfect stage time. Hey. Hope you're good. How are you doing? Uh, Kareem, you all good? Uh, definitely looks like a swastika. We've got that bit as well. I uh, I was thinking, I bet it doesn't. Oh my, OMG Nazis! <laughs> chat pause due to scroll. Oh, I'm reading that as if it's someone's comment and it was actually saying chat pause due to scroll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Amazing. <laughs> I was like, why is. <laughs> I work with this man. I work with this man. <laughs> Wow. Oh, great day, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, show. It genuinely is. <laughs> oh. Graham, have you got anything more to add to today's show before you have a complete meltdown? 
I don't think so. I think that's me done. I think stick a fork in me. I am. I am done. <laughs> oh. Romeo done. Romeo done. Two multiplied by ten plus one. I don't. That's that because I'll start going through. Check out the baseline. I've got 21 seconds to choose this <laughs> screen in time. First stop, one, stop, stop, I'm stop, gonna stop. You're going to get us copyright striking. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Uh, Grandma. Oh, God, it's too close. Grey man. Grandma. Grandma. Uh, Shogun card type in the chat. But that is the end of today's news, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to end the show because we have things to be doing off stream in about eight minutes, so we need to get things wrapped up. What we can say, though, is that we... Are finishing the show live now on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. If you tune in late, if you missed it, feel free to go back and watch the video on demand on Twitch. Or you can watch it fresh and brand new on YouTube. That's ice cream uploads on YouTube and that will be live in roughly an hour or so. Then, as we've mentioned, we've mentioned it a few times through the show, we will be live on four different podcast services later on today. That includes SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, and for the first time ever, we are now live on Google Play podcast services too. So if you want to go get your fill ice cream uploads coming in your ears then there you go that's where you can do it anything else to add from the ice cream studio babe yes it looks like it will be me and a another person tomorrow because graham isn't going to be here so we're going to be live from the studio tomorrow at 10 a.m uh if you stay uh, if you keep in tuned with all of our socials oh, I forgot to... <laughs> you just put me right off uh if you stay in tuned with all of our socials you will find out who that's going to be tomorrow probably closer towards the time but we'll be live from the ice cream studios rather than from graham's bedroom or me somewhere on graham's shoulder uh do follow us on all of our socials yeah it looks like the chatbot's not working chat pod is uh, not yeah. dead. It, it is oh, dead. oh well uh, but yeah that's it from me you will see you tomorrow our new show well i say new show is still it's still new to us. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it from me. I haven't got anything else to add. I want to add massive love to Precision TV and the uh, the host that has just come in just in time for us to end our stream. Hey! <laughs> well, that's what I mate. I will, I will go back over it just one more time. We are just about to wrap up. You can check out the video on demand for the full show or we will have the full video on YouTube later on today as well as podcast services. Check out at Ice Cream Uploads on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, everywhere and you will see all of the content on there. Hope you've had a very good stream precision and I hope everyone else in our stream has had a very good stream too. Uh, I'm just going to get things ready because the last couple of times I've done this I've gone hit yeah, end cool, sound good, and then where's my off button? So there we go. Anyway, so that's it from this man, Bibberino, and from myself, Graham. Until tomorrow when Bibby is back with not me. Tune in, twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. Until then, 